Jeff Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama on the line as we do each and every Wednesday night to provide you the best in Alabama football coverage. Please join him on his show, The Way It Is, Fox 97.9, Muscle Shoals, Alabama, along with uh, Florence as well. Stephen, let's turn to the defense for the Tide, trying to contain Mr. DeAndre Francois, who I believe to be the best quarterback in the ACC after one Deshaun Watson last year. So most people added Lamar Jackson most of the season with a video game type of statistics. And then, of course, Watson really turned it on in the college football playoff and proved to be what we had considered all along the best quarterback in college football. But I thought Francois was better than Jackson, just more of a complete player and really behind a makeshift offensive line. And when I say makeshift, I mean for an elite program like Florida State, they had their issues along the offensive line. Francois is just a freshman, took a beating, kept getting up, delivering uh, big throws in big situations to defeat teams like uh, Michigan in the Orange Bowl, Miami, almost upset Clemson, did just about all that he could do in that game and just a narrow 37-34 loss. So he's back for more, and this time you would think being a more seasoned veteran ready uh, for this kind of game. He does not get rattled at all. Um, Alabama senior linebacker Sean Dion Hamilton spoke with the media on yesterday, and he talked a lot about DeAndre Francois. This young man does not get rattled. As you mentioned, Matt, as you mentioned Mark, he can stare down the barrel of a blitz and throw the ball and put the ball on time. And it, it, He's not overly elusive, but he does enough in that pocket to really force you to play him. This past season, over 3,000 passing yards, 3,350 passing yards, had 20 touchdowns to seven interceptions. What, 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 uh, what Francois is going to need is for his receivers to be able to work back to that football. You got Nyquan Murray and Alden Tate. Alden Tate is six foot five, a big body receiver. Nyquan Murray, a uh, smaller at five foot 11, but runs crisp routes. And there's not much depth behind those two. But those two have got to work back to DeAndre Francois because when you look at Alabama's defense, they're going to come after Francois with pressure. Deshaun Hand, Deron Payne, Raekwon Davis should be play. If not, uh, Josh Frazier. And then you've got Sean Deion Hamilton at linebacker, Christian Miller, Anthony Jennings, Rashawn Evans. These guys are going to come after DeAndre Francois. We're going to pin their ears back and find different ways to affect him in the pocket, whether it's collapsing the pocket, not allowing him to step up and throw or chase him around or really just bull rush, stunt blitz and find ways to get him on the ground, really, really affect him in the passing game. That's going to be the key thing uh, for Alabama's defense and for Francois. He's going to have to have an offensive line step up and really make plays. Florida State, a young offensive line. I believe they they have two red shirt freshmen that are going to be rotated in and playing. They do have a senior on this group, a junior, also a sophomore. But they're going to have two red shirt freshmen rotating on this front line. And these guys have got to be ready, especially that interior line. Florida State's guard play. Deron Payne is a mammoth of a man. This guy is 6'2", 310 pounds. He, he leads Alabama in bench press, power clean, and squats. Oh, and by the way, he's running a 503 in the 40-yard dash. This is 6'2", 310 pounds, putting down 503 in the 40 time. So he's coming out for the quarterback. He's going to try to blow up plays in the middle and allow the other guys to get in that backfield and create big-time stops. So – for DeAndre Francois, having that middle clock, getting the ball out quick, but more so, can Florida State's offensive line hold its own and give him time to throw the football? If they can, this can be a competitive football game. If Deron Payne is giving them trouble and Alabama's able to rush and affect with four guys, it will be a long day for Mr. Francois. 
Florida State playmakers on the outside and in the backfield have all those four and five stars next to their uh, recruiting rankings uh, coming out of high school, but little experience there. Jacquez Patrick, in relief of Dalvin Cook, gained uh, about 450 or 500 yards last year and has been a proven commodity in the backfield as not a great player, but a very serviceable player at this level, meaning very, very good. We're talking again, Florida State good, but no Kermit Whitfield, who was their top receiver last year. Nooney Murray is a guy that uh, made huge plays in the Orange Bowl against Michigan, but the rest of these guys, again, little experience, little proven track record at wide receiver for Florida State, but these guys, the, the, the pedigree is that they are going to be great in college. Now, some of them are just beginning their careers. Other ones have been in the program for a couple of years, and now it's their time. We're talking Auden Tate. We're talking Keith Gavin, George Campbell, uh, guys, again, who are expected to be big-time players and haven't filled the bill yet. And uh, so in the passing game, there are definitely uh, question marks for Florida State. And at running back, besides Patrick, we hear a ton about Cam Akers, but to rely on a freshman in his first game, regardless of being heralded as the number one running back in the country, that's a lot to ask. It's a lot to ask, and you're replacing Dalvin Cook. By far one of the more dynamic backs, one of the more dynamic players in college football. Dalvin Cook was somebody that did not just run the ball, Mark, but catch the ball out of the backfield. A very underrated pass blocker. You have some backs in today's college game that cannot pass block well. So if Alabama chooses to blitz a DeAndre Francois, can uh, Cam Akers come in and pass block and stick a linebacker in the hole or stick you know, a blitzing defensive end and give his quarterback that extra two to three to four seconds to let go of the football on time, accurate, and to the to the playmaker or the target in question, that's going to be a huge key uh, for Cam Akers. Can Florida State be able to run the football against an Alabama defense that, quite frankly, will not let you run the football? It doesn't matter if it's Georgia or if it's LSU or if it's Washington or, or whomever the tie has played in recent years, it's very, very difficult to run the football on the Alabama Crimson Tie. I, I go back to, I remember when you know, Alabama lost Sean Robinson and Jaron Reed and Reggie Ragland to the National Football League. A lot of media pundits thought, well, Ragland's gone, Reed's gone, Sean Robinson's gone, Alabama's defense has got to take a step back, right? That didn't happen because you return Jonathan Allen, Ryan Anderson, Tim Williams, and Reuben Foster, and all those guys did mark was sack your quarterback 54 times, and they allowed just 64 yards rushing a game and 262 yards of offense per game. So Alabama, as long as Nick Saban is recruiting these guys, Bama's going to have guys prepared. Florida State has got to find a way to create – Positive yardage for Florida State. The key is it cannot it cannot afford to get behind the down and distance. Second and six, second and five, third and five, third and four. You know those are the downs that you want to be in, so that your playbook is open. DeAndre Francois has more things he can go into versus second and ten, third and nine, third and. 12, where you're behind that down in distance. Alabama can pin its ears back and come after you. But not just that, your playbook dra uh, drastically shrinks because there's not much you can call on those third and second and long situations.